The big question: How did the printing press affect the lives of ordinary people? Letters come alive. Hurry up, Jacques. We can't afford to keep Monsieur Lafarge waiting. Came the sound of a stern voice. Jacques tried to match his father's long strides as they walked through the narrow back streets of Paris. From time to time, they came upon merchants who stood in their doorways. Hawking their wares, cloth, pots and pans, leather goods and books. As they passed a stack of books on a bookseller's table, Jacques couldn't help but stop. He ran his fingertips across the covers with their mysterious markings. "What do you fancy, young man?" asked the shopkeeper, stepping up. "A book of prayers or stories of brave knights and their incredible adventures." Jacques shook his head and backed away. Even if he had a few coins, there was no point in buying books. The markings, the letters, made no sense to him. He had begged his parents to send him to school so he could learn to read and write, but there was never enough money. Jacques, his father's voice boomed out above the noise of the street. Jacques sprinted to catch up. Sorry, father. I was just. Said Jacques, panting as he spoke, "You must make a good impression. A chance like this won't come again." His father explained. Jacques nodded as they turned a corner. He knew what an opportunity this was. His father's cousin Lafarge owned a printing shop, one of the newest in the city. Lafarge had agreed to take Jacques on. Jacques would be cleaning, running errands, and doing whatever he was told. But he would also get to see a printing press in action and learn how books were made. This job might even lead to an apprenticeship. The thought filled Jacques with excitement, but it terrified him too. What if reading was essential to working at the shop? What would happen if Lafarge found out that he couldn't read? Jacques tried to put that thought out of his mind as his father stopped abruptly in front of a large wooden door. Jacques's fingers tightened around the bag that contained the few possessions he owned. Gripping it with white knuckled hands, he followed his father into the shop. Light from a number of windows lit the spacious interior. A sharp smell like paint or varnish filled the air. A dark-haired boy carried a huge stack of paper in his arms. He looked a few years older than Jacques, perhaps sixteen. A large desk with a slanted top stood on one side of the room. A stooped, gray-haired man stood in front of it. He was picking out small squares of metal from cases above the desk and assembling them in a long wooden tray. His fingers moved very quickly. Impressive as that was, it was the wooden contraption in the middle of the room that took Jacques's breath away. This must be the press, he thought, the new invention everyone was talking about. He'd heard rumors that it could print whole pages at a time and make many copies in minutes. Jacques thought the press looked a little like the wine presses he had seen in the countryside. It had a large screw-like mechanism in the center, and a wooden lever as thick as Jacques's arm. Two men, one tall, one short, were huddled around the press, studying something Jacques could not see. The tall man looked up and caught sight of them. He grinned broadly at Jacques's father. Cousin, he shouted, coming toward them. He shook hands with Jacques's father and looked down at Jacques with piercing eyes. You would be Jacques, of course, the tall man continued. I hope you will prove to be as good a worker as your father promised me you would be. I will work extremely hard, Monsieur Jacques said, at whatever task you give me. Excellent. Now meet your fellow workers, Lafarge replied. His muscular arms swept toward the gray-haired man. 
My typesetter, Henri, the best in the business, he exclaimed loudly. Turning toward the press, Lafarge gestured toward a young man and a, the dark-haired boy. Philippe, my head printer, and his apprentice, Jean-Claude, Lafarge exclaimed. Then he gave a short nod as if enough time had been wasted. Jean-Claude will show you what to do, Lafarge concluded before marching away. Jacques hardly had time to say goodbye to his father before Jean-Claude was leading him toward a back room. He pointed toward a corner where a broom stood beside a pail and a pile of clean rags. Monsieur insists on a spotless shop. The rags are for cleaning type, explained Jean-Claude. Jacques wasn't sure what type was or how it was to be cleaned, but he just nodded. He didn't want to look foolish. Broom in hand, Jacques started sweeping in a far corner of the shop. As he worked, Jacques observed what was happening around him. He hoped to learn as much as he could. Each time customers came in, Lafarge rushed over to greet them. He guided them into a small office where a discussion ensued. Jacques caught snatches of conversations about books, pamphlets, law certificates, and decrees. People wanted all sorts of things printed. Jacques swept his way over to where Henri was working and watched the old man out of the corner of his eye. He had filled a large wooden frame with rows and rows of the little pieces of metal. Jacques realized they must be letters, what Jean-Claude had called type. Henri's job seemed to be to arrange the letters, the type, to form words. Obviously, Henri knew how to read. The thought made Jacques uneasy. Henri suddenly lifted up the frame full of type and spun around, nearly knocking into Jacques. Out of the way, boy, the typesetter yelled. Jacques flattened himself against the nearest wall, but he watched as Philippe helped Henri set the tray of metal pieces into the press and clamp it into place. Behind them, Jean-Claude smeared what looked like shiny black paste onto a board. Ink, thought Jacques. Jean-Claude then grabbed two rounded balls of leather topped with handles. He pressed the balls against the plate of ink and then dabbed their blackened bottoms on the type held tightly in the frame. Jacques could see the surface of the type turn dark as the layer of ink grew thicker. Philippe stepped in, holding a large sheet of cream-colored paper by its edges. Working together, the three men gently fitted the paper into the press so it lay on top of the type. Then Philippe grabbed the huge lever that jutted out from the side of the press. He pulled it toward him with a powerful, even stroke. The great screw in the center of the press turned. A flat wooden board descended, pressing the paper down onto the inked type beneath it. Jacques forgot all about staying out of the way. He sensed something remarkable was about to happen. He stepped closer to the press as Philippe released the lever. Jean-Claude reached in and lifted up the paper. Perfect rows of black letters stood out against its creamy surface. Jacques thought it was the most beautiful thing he had ever seen. That's amazing, he blurted out. It's like magic. Both Philippe and Jean-Claude grinned at him, but Henri scowled and shook his finger. Get to work, boy. If Monsieur Lafarge sees you dawdling, you'll be out of a job, he barked. Jacques flushed with embarrassment and went back to sweeping. Jean-Claude and Philippe seemed nice enough, but Henri obviously didn't care for him. He would need to stay out of the old man's way. Jacques grew used to the flow of the work and the captivating rhythm of the press. One printed sheet after another came to life inside it. Each sheet of paper was hung up to dry clipped to cords that ran across the back of the shop like laundry lines. 
Once, when he was sure Henri was not looking, Jacques stepped up and stared closely at one. The letters were perfectly aligned and elegantly shaped, but he had no idea what was written on that beautiful page because he didn't know which letters were which or how they could be combined into words. He stared and stared at the mysterious shapes, feeling more hopeless than ever. When Jacques finished sweeping, he helped Jean Claude bring in a load of paper that had just arrived. After lunch, Philippe asked him to stir a new batch of ink. The stuff was as dark and sticky as tar, but Jacques liked the smell of it. It's made of lamp black, varnish, and egg white, Philippe explained. There's also powdered metals that help the ink to cling to the type and not spread into the fibers of the paper. Jacques stirred the ink until the muscles in his arms ached, but he forgot the pain when Philippe praised his good work. By late afternoon, Jacques was feeling good about his first day. Then suddenly Henri called to him from across the room. Boy, come here, he yelled. Nervously, Jacques went over and stood beside the typesetter's slanted desk. This type needs cleaning, Henri said, handing Jacques a basket of metal pieces thick with ink. Wipe them until they shine. In the back room, Jacques polished the pieces of type until they gleamed. He returned to Henri and held out the basket. All done, sir, announced Jacques proudly. But Henri didn't take the basket. Instead, he gestured toward the many small compartments in the cases above his desk. Put the letters back where they belong, he ordered. Jacques's heart sank. He glanced up at the cases and then down at the basket of type in his hands. He had no idea which letters were which. He set the basket on the desk, plucked out a piece of type, and pretended to study it, while shame turned his cheeks crimson. He knew the typesetter was watching him even more closely. Finally, Jacques summoned up the courage to look the old man in the eyes. I'm sorry, I can't do it, sir, he said in a voice that was almost a whisper. Henri took the piece of type from Jacques. I knew that already. This was a test, Henri replied. You knew? How? I tried so hard, said Jacques, all the while struggling to keep his voice from trembling. The old man's reply was quiet and kind. Yes, you did. But when you gazed up at the drying sheets of paper, you simply stared at them. If you'd been reading the words printed on them, your eyes would have moved from side to side, he explained. I see, Jacques sighed, feeling his shoulders sag. And now I've failed your test as well. Oh no, Jacques, you passed my test quite nicely, said the old man with a smile. Jacques looked up sharply. But, but I, he stuttered. You were truthful, Henri said, interrupting. That is as important as being able to read, at least as far as I am concerned. But I can't see how I can learn to read, sir, exclaimed Jacques. I have no money for school. Then it's a good thing you have me, Henri replied. The old man picked up a piece of type from the case. He dabbed a bit of ink onto its surface and pressed it gently against the back of Jacques's hand. That is the letter J. It is the first letter of your name. Tomorrow you will begin learning all the others, he said calmly. Jacques touched the ink mark on his hand. Why? he asked. Why would you do this for me? Because I remember how it felt not to be able to read, the old man replied. Then Henri put a hand on Jacques's shoulder. This morning, when you saw your first sheet come off the press, you said it was magic. It is, in a way. But the greater magic is reading. The ability to read will change the world. You mark my words, Jacques.